Lord be with you. A warm welcome to you this morning. Uh, we have a few announcements. Uh, first, we'd like to thank everyone who helped with the uh, movie night we had on Friday. We had a pretty good turnout at that. Uh, also, we have a sign-up for photographs for the church directory in the narthex, and the pictures are going to start being taken next Sunday, which is our rally day. And so next week at rally day, we're after the service at 1030, we're going to have Jenny Williamson doing a concert, and then we'll have a cookout and game. So please consider coming for that, and we have a sign-up sheet for that as well. And uh, we also have a free will offering for the Makana Yezu Seminary in Ethiopia. Uh, what happened this past week is the river alongside the seminary flooded and it covered all, all the way to the roofs of the buildings and about nine or ten people were killed. And uh, that's a place that I spent a lot of time in my previous travels. So uh, there's a basket back there for free will offering. Our opening hymn is 585, Lord Jesus Christ with us abide. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Help. 
Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We will speak the intro it together. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Vindicate me, O oh Lord, for I have walked in integrity and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O oh Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O oh Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. and merciful God, defend your church from all false teaching and error, that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. Thank you. 
The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 29. The vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment to taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us, who knows us, you turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay? that the thing made should say of its maker, He did not make me, or the thing formed say of him who formed it, He has no understanding. Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You, ha you leave the commandment of God and hold 
hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is korban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess the faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn 865, Lord Help Us Ever to Retain. Jesus. Amen. Can you believe that they came from the grocery store and ate lunch without washing their hands? They were even touching fish and vegetables at the store. Just think of all those germs. 
They even reached into the bowl of chips with their dirty hands. Now I can't eat from that bowl. I can't believe at our church potluck, he just reached in and grabbed chips out of the bag with his dirty fingers. Didn't even wash his hands. I can't believe he coughed and grabbed the food off the plate without washing. And now he's going to spread COVID to all of us. Now, you've probably know someone who's gone to a meal and eaten with dirty hands. Maybe you yourself have done it. You've reached and grabbed some chips out of a bag without washing your hands to the disgust of everyone around you. In the Gospel reading, the scribes and the Pharisees were complaining about the disciples' hygiene, or rather, their lack of hygiene. The first two verses of the Gospel lesson say, Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come to Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. Now notice the very first thing Mark does is explain what does defiled mean because to the Gentile readers they wouldn't quite understand this. Defiled means they didn't wash their hands. Now many of the people who read the Gospel of Mark probably didn't understand what the big deal was about this. What's the big deal about washing your hands before you eat? Now, some of you might fall into a similar camp. You may not care about washing your hands before eating. Or you might be a fanatic about washing your hands. You carry that hand sanitizer around with you, and every single thing you touch, you wash your hands. The point of this gospel lesson is not really about how well you wash or don't wash your hands. Even though Jesus challenges the Pharisees about hand washing, he isn't telling you in this passage that you should or shouldn't wash your hands before you eat. Now to most of us who grew up here in the United States or in a Western culture, washing your hands is something we drill in to young children from the very beginning. Before children go to lunch at school, we tell them to go wash their hands. It's the sanitary thing to do. It's the way to stop germs. It's the way to prevent disease. Over in Ethiopia, if, or if you go to an Ethiopian restaurant like the one on Grand Avenue in St. Louis, after you sit down, the very first thing that happens is someone brings over a basin and a pitcher of water, and they pour water over your hands to wash your hands before you eat. A lot of cultures have a tradition of washing your hands before you eat. Now the washing described in our Gospel reading is not primarily about sanitation, although it might have also served that purpose, but rather it is about ritual. Some of the Jewish writers and the rabbis said, if a person did not wash their hands in this ritual way before eating, their sin was almost as bad as committing adultery. Now you can kind of understand why the Pharisees were asking Jesus, why don't your disciples wash their hands? They are implying that Jesus' disciples are, in fact, very sinful because they're not washing their hands. One of the rules regarding hand washing required a person to travel up to four miles to find water to wash their hands. See, we're not living in the time where everyone has running water in their house or in your church where we have running water. I don't think on the way to uh, Jerusalem from Capernaum there were a lot of hand washing stations and surely the disciples were not carrying around hand sanitizer with them. You see, a person would need to go and find a well and draw the water so he could properly wash his hands. And Jesus is now teaching and preaching in Gennesaret, which is at least a day's journey, if not more, away from Jerusalem. 
you see, it wouldn't have necessarily been very easy for the disciples to have washed their hands. Yet the Pharisees were watching to see, are they going to go up to four miles away so they can wash their hands? Obviously, the disciples didn't do that. Presumably, Jesus didn't either. What kind of a teacher is he if he breaks all the rules? Now, this rule about washing your hands is not even found in the Bible. You see, it was invented by the rabbis and the teachers of the law. It was a tradition. Now, you might be able to imagine or conceive of how this hand-washing rule started. For instance, if you went to the marketplace and you shook hands with a person who was notoriously evil or a notoriously bad person, then some of that evil rubbed off on you. Or if you touched a book or an object that was used in some evil sort of way, now you're contaminated. You kind of get the idea, anything that you had contact with, if it wasn't holy or pure, contaminated you. And you would become more and more sinful by picking up the evil and the filth of others around you. So the idea was you have to wash and purify yourself before you eat. It really didn't have much to do about sanitation and germs. Rather, it was a matter of appearance. Surely, I have to improve myself from this person over here. And you see, the Pharisees noticed that the disciples did not follow this law. They didn't follow this tradition. What kind of a teacher was Jesus? How could he be a great prophet? How could he even be a great teacher if his disciples did not respect the traditions and the customs of their own religion? And Jesus says to the Pharisees, you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. Now one of these traditions that was quite a burden of people is mentioned in our gospel lesson. It says you can declare a portion of your wealth to be korban, that is dedicated to God. So the fourth commandment says you should honor your father and mother. And in Jesus' day, if you had elderly parents, presumably you would take them into your house, you would take care of them, you would use your own means to help them out. Well, the Pharisees had a way around this. What you do is you dedicate a portion of your wealth to synagogue or the church. Then you didn't have to help your parents. You see, that money you would have spent on your parents is dedicated to God. So like, we can't help our parents anymore. And you see, the Pharisees made up these rules to burden the people. So Jesus comes and he sets his disciples free from these traditions of men and calls them to follow the word of God. He calls us to follow the word of God. You see, the Pharisees, their hands were clean, but their hearts were dirty. And Jesus came not to wash our hands, but to clean our hearts. Now we could, if we wanted to, try to list a number of traditions that get into the way of the Word of God. There was a time, even just a hundred years ago, in the Lutheran Church where people would say you shouldn't play cards or you shouldn't go to the theater or you shouldn't go to a dance because those activities might lead you into sin. Or don't buy life insurance or insurance for your house. Believe it or not, the Lutheran Church in America even taught don't put a lightning rod on your house or your barn because if you really trusted God, you wouldn't be afraid of lightning striking. And you see, all of those were traditions that had no basis in the Word of God. Now, maybe the caution to avoid sin or the caution to trust God was valid and right, but the scriptures did not forbid us from doing any of those things. 
Now, we probably, too, have some traditions that we follow today that maybe we really don't need to do. And once again, the point of this gospel lesson is not for us to sit through here and name all the possible traditions that might get in the way. Rather, Jesus wants us to hear the word of God and not let man-made things get in the way of it. In other words, we should not invent clever reasons or excuses why we don't need to do something that the Bible commands. Now there's another aspect to this, and sometimes when people feel very guilty or you feel sinful, you want to find a way to clean yourself. And, of course, we hear in church that you are forgiven. Jesus has forgiven you. But sometimes, even after we've heard that we've been forgiven, we still feel guilty. And so we might try to invent some ritual or activity to make us feel more clean or more pure. And the church has done this throughout its entire history, inventing rituals or activities to try to make us feel clean from our sin. Jesus, instead, calls us to honor him with our hearts, the hearts that he has made clean, and believe his word and his promise. There is another aspect that the Pharisees implied that Jesus had become unclean. And Jesus, in fact, had become unclean but he became unclean for us. When you think about baptism, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. He took on our sin. Jesus' baptism in the Jordan was his coronation. It's when he was anointed by God to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, when you were baptized, all of your sin, the sin that darkens your heart and makes it dirty, an entire lifetime of sin was washed into the waters of baptism. And that dirty water containing all of your sin and the sin of every person who's been baptized was poured onto Jesus when he was baptized. You became clean and Jesus became dirty with your sin. You became righteous and holy. Your heart was cleansed. And you see, that is why Jesus went to the cross, so that he could be the sacrifice for our sin. He answered for our sin once and for all. And now he has risen and ascended, where he comes to us to forgive us, where he is our advocate where he reminds us that you are clean. You see, we don't need to worry about traditions or rituals to reach our Lord Jesus. Jesus always comes to us. He's always there for us. He cleansed us in the waters of holy baptism. He gives us his precious body and blood to take away our sin. Jesus gives us access to himself, and he calls all of those who believe to receive his gifts and faith. So you really don't need to worry about washing your hands, at least to make God happy. You might still want to wash them to get rid of some germs. You don't need to worry about washing your pots and pans in just the right way to please God. Because of Jesus, God is well pleased with you. You have a clean heart. You have been washed. Go in peace. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are known, grant us a true faith that we would honor you not only with our lips, but serve you faithfully with all our heart, mind, and strength. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious Lord, give joy and hope to all your children in remembrance of their baptism, that they may rejoice in the forgiveness of sins that Christ freely pours out in this saving flood. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, preserve us from rejecting your commandments for the doctrines of men. By your Spirit's aid, lead all Christians to keep your commandments in thought, word, and deed, honoring you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, guide and lead those facing difficult life and death decisions to make God-pleasing choices, affirming that life is a precious gift from you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers for our nation and its leaders, for all civil servants, and for those whose work imperils them for the sake of their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, encourage your word and grace all who suffer physically, emotionally, and spiritually on account of illness, especially those we name in our hearts and those from our congregation. For Carla, for Cheryl, for Oliver, for Caleb, for Pastor Tony Sikora, for the family of Tim, related to Yvonne. Bless all medical professionals with the skills necessary to give relief and care to their pain where possible. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen the faith and sustain to life everlasting all who partake in the fellowship of this altar and receive Christ's body and blood this day in Holy Communion. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated as we receive our gifts and offerings. Please rise for the offertory. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to you, and 
it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and drink the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Amen. Christ. Take and drink the true blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Made by the blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and sustain you until everlasting life. Amen.
true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. 
body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism in a life everlasting. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism and a life everlasting. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism and a life everlasting. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism and a life everlasting. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism and a life everlasting. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism and a life everlasting. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism and a life everlasting. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. for the Nunc Dimittis. Until 
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn, 575, My Hope is Built and Nothing Less. Stand before. 